Okay, today we are going to talk about another great WPF control, and that's the scroll viewer. Uh, we will be using the same example we used for our group box and expander demo. So let's run this application and see where we left off. Okay, on the left hand side we have three group boxes that we had. And on the right hand side we had a uh, the this group box on the left hand side they were absolute positioning. This next group box we have here it was inside a grid with rows and columns with dynamic positioning. And then we had expanders to solve some of our space problems. Okay. That being said, let's dive into Scroll Viewer. So I'm going to start off things with adding another group box here on the left hand side. Let's copy and paste. Okay. Since it's absolute positioning, the, we have two green group box now second one sitting on top of the first one because of the same position. Let's drag that below the uh, original green and let's run this. So now we have four group boxes and the last one we can barely see it. We could definitely go ahead and reposition our window but uh, then again, we could have more group boxes, and this is not really what we want to do all the time. So that brings us to our scroll viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap these four group boxes with A. Let's do Control K S and use a tag and place inside a scroll viewer. Okay, once we do that, these guys start complaining. That's because it says the property con content is set more than once, which means we can use one child element in there, and that child element should be something that can have more than one child element can be a grid, wrap panel, or stack panel, or any of those panels. So let's wrap this group boxes again and uh, put it inside a panel. Let's add another tag. And I'm gonna go with wrap panel this time. Okay, and now it start behaving kind of unusual, and again, that's because we had all this absolute positioning of our group boxes. So let's get rid of those margins we had initially. And that will help them rearrange their position. Okay, one more. I think that's it. So we have all four of them. Let's run this again. Now, scroll the work can help us to see all our content without resizing our window. Okay. Um, as a side note, if you decide to use a grid instead of wrap panel, it's probably a better idea to use rows and columns and put these group boxes like we did here, place inside uh, rows and columns, because otherwise um, it's going to be absolute positioning and that can cause other issues. All right, so now let's 
go to our right hand side and focus on the expanders. So first thing I want to do, I want to get rid of this first group box. We don't need that anymore for this part. Okay, so we have our expanders and next thing I want to do, I want to select all these expanders and by default I want to set the is expanded property to true. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste a few extra expanders. Let's add three more. Okay, let's run this. And again, we have content that's not visible with the original size of our window, our application. So let's go ahead and add that expander. I'm gonna grab all these expanders and wrap with a scroll viewer. And if you noticed here, we didn't have any complaints. That's because the first child element is a stack panel. If I collapse this, see this stack panel uh, hosts all the expanders inside it. So we have one child element for scroll weaver and then multiple expanders inside the stack panel. That's why it's not complaining. Okay, let's run this. Okay, now we have our expanders and we have a similar behavior as the first scroll viewer. Okay. So we saw the content visibility problem with scroll viewer. Now let's talk about a couple of properties that are noteworthy. And one of those properties is can content scroll? Can content scroll? I'm going to set this to true. By default, it's false. Let's run this one more time. Now notice the difference. So if I click on scroll, it's going to scroll one item at a time. And that's what the can content scroll property when it's set to true does. Okay. And that works on stack panel. If I do the same thing on the wrap panel over here, it's not going to work. Um, that's the wrong place. We need to set that in the scroll viewer. Can content scroll true. So let's run this. Notice no change here, but here on the stack panel, it jumps to the next item in the line. Okay, that's because the stack panel, where is stack panel? Go to our stack panel. and go to definition. It implements iScroll info interface, whereas the red panel doesn't. So that's why the can content um, scroll property works on stack panel, but it doesn't work on red panel. Okay. Uh, the next property I want to talk about, it's 
horizontal content, uh, horizontal scroll viewer visibility. So if I set this to auto, now let's run this. Now the scroll viewer on the red panel side work horizontally. That's because red panel's default behavior is horizontal scrolling. Whereas if I do the same thing on the stack panel side, it's not gonna do any change. we still have the vertical scroll bar versus the horizontal here. Okay. But uh, if I change the stack panel behavior to horizontal, I'm sorry, we don't need this grid that row and uh, row span anymore. Let's get rid of those. If I change this orientation to horizontal, the scroll viewer will be horizontal versus vertical. Let's run this again. And still this content can scroll is true. That still works, so one item at a time as you scroll them. All right, so that's the scroll viewer. Uh, that's it for now. Until next time, so long.